Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. What's up, everybody? Uh, is, we're back with the After Hours podcast. Uh, we have a very special guest today, our very own special super duper head moderator uh, at MI Investing Club. We have Joe Kelly. So thank you, Joe, for coming on. Thank you guys for having me. Perfect. So as you guys know, we started this podcast. We've had Pal, we've had Alex on, uh, and we try to do it a little differently. We try to get more into the emotional side of trading. Not, I mean, we get into the journey of how they got here, but we also want to hear about the struggles they went through emotionally, family, everything. So that's kind of the basis of our podcast, and we kind of want to keep along that same line. So kind of we're getting into it. So Joe, if you want to take it away. Um, what was your life like before you started trading? Like, what were you doing? What was work like, family, and all that? So, um, I have no history in the stock market. I have no history in finance or any of that. Um, when I was 18, graduated high school, I then went off to college for actually uh, classical guitar. And you, that's a thing? Is that like a, a major? Yeah, it's a thing, actually. <laughs> like, you play in an orchestra or a symphony. Yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. I didn't even think of that. Yep. Yeah. And so, um, when I went on that, I moved uh, like three and a half hours north of where I lived in Oklahoma at the time. And <clears throat> short period of time later, I ended up moving back to my hometown because the cost was just way i don't come from any money whatsoever yeah and like whatsoever did not live in a nice town did not live in a big house did not have yeah. new cars nothing um and it was just me and my mom and so whenever um i moved back i decided well i'll just do two years at the community college because everything at that community college, like we were in a big small town, if that makes sense. So basically yeah, they made yeah, sure yeah. that everything you taught at that school would transfer to all the universities that were around. And so you could go there, get all of your basics and you didn't have to pay out the ass. Yep. Fortunately, I was able to go and get um, a full ride scholarship for performing arts. Um, and so I didn't have to pay anything to get that done to get all that done. And so time goes by, uh, I graduate that and I go to university of Arkansas and I've entirely changed majors in that time. Oh, wow. Harry, all of your messages finally. Yeah, no, I'm just now I'm getting them. It's a, it's a Canadian bullshit service. It's a Canadian yeah. dialogue. Yeah, finally coming through. Finally. Canada fucking sucks. Jesus. Christ. Anyway. So, um, <laughs> So I um, went to University of Arkansas, and it, while I was at the community college, I changed majors. I did not continue performing arts. I just played uh, and performed while I was there to pay for everything else, but I was taking other courses uh, like physics and chemistry and everything. And I was actually going to specialize in pharmaceuticals and organic chemistry because I always liked math because it's definitive and it, you know, it's, yeah. it's black and white. There's only one answer that's right. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I always failed. Not, not when I do math. <laughs> when I do math, it's all fucked up. And, so, and that's uh, why I always liked math, though, is because it's either you're right or you're wrong. There's no, like, dude, it made me so mad in, like, English classes, reading, speech, all that other stuff, you know, when there was, like, the, you could say an answer, and then and then the teacher or the professor would be like, well, you know, another interpretation of that situation. And I'd be like, fuck you. No, there's no interpretation. <laughs> there is no different interpretation. That is the interpretation. That's what it says. And so I just gravitated to math because it's one final answer. And so I went and continued in electrical engineering after the chemistry thing because I took organic chemistry and nearly failed. Had, that was the only college class they ever had to drop out of. Because it was it was one of those moments where the professor came to me and goes, "Hey, look, you know, you're one of the of the five or six people that are probably going to have to stop this <laughs> midterms before we take the midterms. Because if you go past the midterms, you got to stick with it, and whatever you get is your grade is your grade." Uh, and he goes, "Probably would recommend not continuing." <laughs> Well, that and was nice. That was honest. I was, yeah, I was like, Dr. Yeah. Curtis. I'll never forget him. Dr. Curtis. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, 
And he goes, <laughs> probably wouldn't continue this because you're not going to pass this class. You'll have to retake it. It won't look good. Uh, and I'm like, okay, thanks for that. Fantastic. <laughs> and so I left and I went to talk to the counselor and she was like, look, these are what your credits transfer for. You can either continue in this path or go with engineering. And I was like, well, since I've already gone this far, let's just go with engineering then. And so they enroll me in all these other classes with engineering in the next semester and everything goes through that. And so I end up moving to Texas at that point. Um, and you're single, right? You don't, you don't know you're, you're I was married dating a girl at the time, but okay. you know, yeah. I moved to Texas because I wanted to move to Texas. Okay, yeah. If she was going to come along, she was going to come along. And, <laughs> it, but if she wasn't, she was going to go, whatever it was. <laughs> and so um, I'm going to Dallas because that's where all of my family is. I'm going to Dallas. And so I go to Dallas. I get a job working at a guitar center and uh, just to pay my way. Yeah, exactly. And, and um, then I'm postponing going back to school, okay? Because if I can live in Texas for a year, I can then become a Texas resident because I'm not Texas born. I can become a Texas resident in a year. And then in a year, I can get in-state tuition. I don't have to pay out-of-state yeah. tuition costs. They have that in here, in here, Harry. I don't know if they do that in Canada, but. <laughs> uh, they do it a little bit, but school's free there. But here in the U.S., we have to pay for this shit. No, we just messing with you, bro. I know. I'm just, just you know. shoveling free shit at them. Fuck Canada, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, oh, um, wait, Rhett, were you still performing? At the, this is just random. Were you still performing any shows? Nothing. No, like stripping. No. Nothing. None of that. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, I stripped on the side. Yeah. <laughs> Passive income. Well, I guess it's active income. That's more yeah. active income than anything. But so uh, I, um, I'm, I'm working at a guitar center. I'm postponing like going back to school because I don't want to pay forty grand. I'd rather pay fifteen because I was going to have to get loans at that point. Like I, yep. I couldn't get any more full rides. I couldn't get any more of this. I could. I, it wasn't available at that time to me. So I, I wasn't you know, academically excelled enough than all these other yep. kids that were just coming out of it. I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it. So uh, I basically postpone it. And then in the meantime, I end up leaving Guitar Center to go work for Ford. And I just started selling cars because and I didn't how old know. How at this point? You're 20. 20. I'm 20 at this point. Yep. 20, almost 21. Uh, and within like a month, I'm 21. And so we'll just say 21. And so once that's, once that starts, I go full time working with Ford and I continue in that. And oh my God, I made more money than I'd ever seen in my entire life. I, I had never made six figures in my life yeah. ever, ever. No one in my family did. No, besides yeah. like my aunt that lives in Texas, but yeah, uh, nobody back in all ever saw that kind of income. Nobody, it was nothing. Nobody had ever seen it. I never thought I could do that. And so all I did was just go out and work. And so I ended up being fortunate enough to meet a general manager that ran the store that kind of took me under his wing because he liked my work ethic. And um, he trained me all the way through up to upper management. And in two years, oh, wow. I, was, I was leading my own teams. I was leading my own sales teams. There were literally people that were twice my age that I was telling them how to do, how to do this. Went to so sales 23 management. 23 at this point. Yeah, 23 yeah. coaching, you know, 40, 50, 60-year-old yeah. people. Wow. And went through all that stuff and then end up in sales management. And then I went to finance. And then I started moving around. Uh, I started going to different locations um and working in those different locations and it would dude it was just like every year every two years i was moving yeah yeah and so in that interim time when i was 23 or so uh, yeah 23 24 <clears throat> i meet my now wife and then we get engaged and then we get married we have a kid and then we have another kid and in that period of time of having two kids, we've moved three states already in the periods Jesus. of marriage, first kid, pregnancy of next kid, birth of next kid. Like it was hell 
uh, it was it was hellacious. It was like we were we were here, we were there, we were here, we were there. So we did you um, enjoy did you enjoy working in the car industry like during that time? Like, was there a period where like you thought that was the best job ever? You like fucking loved it, or was it always absolutely. Like, kind of absolutely? Yeah. It and it will be something I eventually go back to. Not working in that as like yeah. a, a in a management sense, but it will be something I eventually invest in. Really? Uh, because I have people in upper management that have connections with those that can act, yeah. because if you have an X amount of funds, you can become a silent partner in one of these stores. And I yeah. swear to you, there is nothing that prints money more than maybe like drugs, the sale of yeah. drugs and cocaine yeah. uh, <laughs> than a car dealership or the, I swear, Reserve. Or the fed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There is nothing that prints more money than a car dealer. The people don't understand forever, right? oh. the amount of capital that flows through those places on a daily basis. It is insane amounts of money. And it, they literally just print money. If it has nothing to do with the market, just that alone, automobile industry, automobile sales, that's what I would tell anybody to put their money in. And if they can, because you yeah. have to be approved by the motor company, you know, whether it's Kia, Chevy, Toyota, Ford, mm -hmm. Dodge, whoever it is, uh, if you can actually be a part of that. It, in, oh, wow. uh, so you can't, so there's a long, there's a long process as to whether you can own one of their stores or run one of their locations and so on and so forth. Anyway, so I knew people that did that and I wanted to continue yeah. doing that. Yep. But I started doing 12, 14, 16 hour days and working six, seven days a week. And eventually I got to this point where I was like, I need to, and I'll tell you what sparked it is I got a really big bonus check one time. More money than I've ever seen in a single check ever. And because we'd hit all of our sales targets and all this yeah. other stuff. And it was the yeah. motor company paid out big, the dealer paid out big. And it was like, we were all like, holy. Yeah. It, it was it was great and because i didn't know what stock trading was at that point uh <laughs> didn't realize it could your life went way downhill yeah. oh dude it just <laughs> from the peak um, to the valley uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so uh i got this check and i'm just holding it and i'm like what do i do with this dude i had no savings I, I was just about to ask if you were everything. a saver or not. Everything yeah. I ever made, I spent it. New yeah. cars, new clothes, designer clothes, designer everything. It it was, you know, it we rented in houses. We didn't buy any homes. We yeah. didn't buy any homes at that point because we moved so much. Yeah, you were so mobile so that it, it was, sense yeah, I yeah. can't can't buy anything. So I'm just I'm just renting the nicest houses that I can absolutely, I'm like maxing out my income in like how much house can I get with the nicest house to <laughs> the nicest neighborhood, dude, because I come from nothing. Yeah. And yeah. so I no, was like, I, mean, I want to live must... in it. Yeah. And, and so it was, it, so I wasn't a saver at all yeah. whatsoever. Was her, was her mom like amazed at this? Like just seeing places you live and shit like that? Like, oh, Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely she'd come over and she'd be like i'm so proud of you i'm so proud of you for all the work that you've done and i went hey mom i want to learn stock trading what yeah <laughs> and, uh, and so uh <laughs> and anyway so long all that goes through and i get the big bonus check and i'm in kansas at this time and uh and I'm looking at it and I'm like, what do I even do with this? What do I even do with this amount of money? I never saved any money, but I was make I was making to a point where I was like, I can't just blow this. I've got kids yeah. now. I've got to think about this. Think long term. Uh, and so I was like, how do I grow this? How to turn twenty thousand into twenty million? Like. <laughs> Yeah, and the typical person popped up. Yeah, <laughs> how to turn, how to how to make a million or whatever it is. And was he in a blue Lamborghini? Was that what got you? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, 
what i can live where <laughs> so uh, i yeah i was hooked and it yep. was that first like stock that went from two to 20 in a matter of minute and keep in mind there was still some hot otc plays in this time yeah and so yep. it was still otcs it wasn't all listed it was still some it was still some listed but when i started it was still good otc plays not the, not you know like not 2013 when you had like awesome penny stocks yeah that was this really is like 2015 running. right yeah yeah and yeah, and so no Oh shit! It's 2020. That would have been 2014. So I was only one year from missing Fannie Mae. Yeah. <laughs> I was one year. <laughs> shy. Let's be honest. You would have missed it. We all would have. I would have missed shit. it. I wouldn't have known what to do. I would have. I would have fucking bought the top and sold the bottom. I would have yeah. just. I, I mean, I would. Bow would have been selling <laughs> all of my orders. I've been like, buy it. And he's like, short it. And that would have been me. I would have been there. That would have yeah, been you me. You would have been filling into his short positions. I would have been the night market maker. <laughs> Filing a lawsuit. It's like, he took my fills. Like a... Yeah. And so um, I, 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 I missed it by a year. And so I start learning. Um, I take that program uh, that, that you sign up for. Yeah. And all, dude, I spent because again i'm not a saver here we are yeah. i i bought everyone's content i bought everyone's service i bought everyone's yeah. everything because i knew nobody that knew how to trade i knew nobody that had anybody in any interest in the yeah. market i had nobody to look to i had nobody to talk to i yeah. uh, in nothing there's a mark on my screen you know what it is it's like on my face i was like get that off of that <laughs> It's like a fly on Pence's head. <laughs> now, how are you finding out about these people? With you? Cause you, did you have Twitter at this point, or were you just on like? Dude, I didn't Google, know Twitter was a thing. Googling, like, I didn't know Twitter oh, was really? a thing. I didn't. You I were just Google. I knew like, what Twitter was. Yeah. I knew what Twitter was because obviously because you know there's no censorship yeah. there, and you can be like, "What yeah. girl posted what?" And that's Did, about all. OG I knew Twitter that was great. <laughs> OG right. Twitter yeah, there was some serious. <laughs> There was some serious value. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Twitter but, was savage uh, back I, in the day. Yeah. And so <laughs> it, it was, uh, it, dude, I just started with nothing, knowing nothing, following people, following trades. My, I remember my first ever trade. I got the text message alert to take this trade. And I was like, fuck yeah, I'm going to be a millionaire. Yeah. And like, I took it, made $40. Thought I was the hottest shit in the world. <laughs> Wait, while we're on this text message thing, so one time I was cutting hair and my phone was sitting on the counter because at this point, same thing for me, I was learning to trade. I get a text alert to buy this like stock X, Y, and Z. I leave my client. It's the dumbest shit I've ever done. I leave my client. I run in the back on my laptop. I, I oh. buy this stock. I bought a thousand shares of a two dollar. He's stock. over here like this. He's like half his shave, <laughs> half standing up, and James like no, yeah, please. I was, I was actually doing a, I remember like it was yesterday, he was doing a, I was doing a beard trip. Half of his beard was cut and I'm like, dude, sorry, I got to buy this stock. I'm being told to do this. Bought a thousand shares of like a $2 stock and it tanked 50 cents instantly. Oh and I'm like, God. and then I just waddle back to this guy's chair and I'm like, just, just fucking miserable. I'm like, fuck. Oh. <laughs> my little E-Trade account, but, <laughs> but I, so, <laughs> It's just like a and, tear, like, using a tear and he wants to talk about it now. Did you make money? Yeah. How's it going? Where's it at? Shut <laughs> no, your mouth. Just shut up. <laughs> shut up, or I'm gonna cut you like Edward <laughs> Scissorhands. Jam hands. the Clippers yeah, a little just... bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how did your at this point? Did you tell your wife? She's your wife at this point. So, did you tell her anything, or were you just like kind of like watching porn, like secretly doing this? <laughs> yeah. No, she knew. Yeah, no. Oh, so we she, had a basement. Good. We had a bait. So in Kansas, in Kansas, they don't build two-story houses unless you're yeah. a millionaire. Uh, yeah. They instead they put the second level in the floor because of all the tornadoes. So you get a basement yeah. instead. Yeah. And so, um, funny fact: there are actually more tornadoes in Texas, in Dallas area, than there is in Kansas all put together. Have you had but, a bunch this year? Or not even. No, uh, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I, was too, I was too focused on fucking not trying to die when I went to Home Depot from somebody coughing in my mouth. Like, I, <laughs> like a tornado behind you. You're yeah, I'm like, not concerned, not concerned. 
I'm going to need you to stop that tornado. This guy over here <laughs> sneezed. Sir, I'm going to need you to get up and leave. Yeah, no, it was – I have no idea. I have no idea. But all I know is that when we were in Kansas, there was like a bunch of tornadoes in Dallas and they were like, and some, some service, some news service out there somewhere was like, statistically, there are more tornadoes in Texas than there are in Kansas. And I was like, oh shit, look at that. So naturally you moved to Dallas. That makes yeah. Sense. So naturally I'm like, well, fuck this. There's not enough danger here. Let's go back to Texas. And <laughs> I was like, I was thinking I was going to live where the Wizard of Oz was. and um, <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking this whole time. And just never That's all knew. Canadians know about the U.S. and Kansas. They're like, that's all they know about Kansas. <laughs> Dorothy. This isn't Dorothy Kansas anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, she knew everything. You so know, white Because yeah. I, I was in that guy's course, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know if I should name drop in this. I'm probably not. I'm trying to yeah, just uh, Probably not. Doesn't... Okay. Everybody knows who, you know. Yeah, we all know. He's got a, he's got a nice little and, curly head. Yeah. Hair. yeah. I got nothing against it. I got nothing oh, against yeah. it. I learned a metric fuck ton and met a lot of people and got introduced to like a, a, a group, a, like a, a crowd of people that I would have never been able to associate with anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. And – wouldn't trade it for anything. I I would do I would do everything the exact same every single every single time I think yeah. about this. Yeah. But um oh yeah, so anyway, the basement thing, that's where my office was. Was, you know, in, in mm-hmm. there it's like dude, it's it's not like concrete floors. It's like fully done basements, you know, yeah. really nice designed everything. It's like man cave area. So I just yep. made that entire thing like an office and a music studio and all other stuff I that's had. Cool. I, yeah. And so it, it was, uh, that's where I just did all the studying and dude, I would be down there until, uh, like 4.00 AM and then I would have to get up at 7.00 AM to be at work at 8.00 AM. And I would just be down there watching videos, reading articles, yeah. reading, 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 studying. So dude, I was literally addicted to it. I was addicted to it. And so, so when people talk about, you know, I work 12, I work 14, I work 16 hours a day. I don't have time to do this. I'm like, no, you do. You just don't fucking yeah. want it enough. Yeah. You exactly. don't yeah. want it enough. And it's true. Yeah, I mean, so, how much do, how much, how many times do we say that? Like, especially in chat, right? It's like, if you want to do this bad enough, like you're going to fucking like that, not to be gross. I remember times I was sitting on the fucking toilet watching videos and shit because yeah. I'm like, I can't stop watching this shit. Yep. Like yeah, and if you don't literally, it don't work, so. literally. <laughs> right? What, Harry? Oh, I just said you know if you don't put in the work, someone else is going to for yeah. you. Someone else will take your spot. Yeah. Right? I know. Yeah. Everyone, oh yeah. Everyone loves that like expression, like oh the market is you versus yourself. But it's like the market is also you versus like millions Some of other Chinese people. kid that's doing it way harder than you are. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, it's true, you know, so there's also an element where it's like kind of a, it's a zero sum game where like, you know, it is like you versus someone else on the other side of the screen. And if someone else yeah. is harder, they're going to take your money, you know? Yeah. Well, I find it funny too. Like people say there's not enough hours in the day, but it's like, but technically if you bust your ass for even a year, I know that's a short time frame, but even a year, like you might be working yourself hard like every day and then studying this. It's like, but on the back end, you could have the rest of your life with working barely anything, you know? Right. So it's like, yeah. it's, that, it's kind of tough, but it's like, you know, you get home from work, fucking study, you know, it's, I don't know how you did it with kids and shit. I mean, that must've been exhausting. I mean, I, I don't have kids and I'm tired of kids. I don't, I don't know how the fuck you do it. <laughs> Dude, like, I don't know. I mean, for one, you have to have a supportive spouse. I will say yeah. that you can't do it. Yeah. Like if, I'm not going to advise in certain areas, but I mean, if your wife's a bitch or if your husband's a dickhead, you need to fucking divorce them. I'm just going to say it like that. If they don't support, if they don't support any endeavor that you go with, I don't care how crazy it sounds. I don't care if you think that you're going to be able to fucking make a million selling newspapers door to door. I I don't care. Your spouse has to believe in you. Exactly. And that is crucial. If they don't, uh, why the fuck are you married to them? Especially I mean, learning this. 
Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, the downs, I mean, I'm sure we'll get into yours, of course. I, the downs of trading that I've had when I first started, I, I mean, emotional, grumpy. I can think of every emotion I ever had. And like, if you don't have a spouse that's not going to be like kind of understanding, then I would say even don't either don't start or divorce them if this is what you want to do because there's no yeah. way. I mean, no if the way. sex is that good, maybe stay. Yeah. I would. But <laughs> yeah, but, no, that's I, I don't know how. There's a lot of fish in the sea. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, for for the females that have that have husbands that don't support this, birds up. Yeah, I mean, pick them out. Do, for the men that oh, have women I, that don't support it. Birds up. Oh, if I had a wife that traded out. Uh, I actually always think about this. Like, it would be cool to have a wife that would trade, but if I ever saw that she had a bit, like a better P and L than me, I would probably freak out. I'd be, like, I'd be like, no. Dude, just go my wife sabotage. actually started like watching all the content that I was because she wanted to understand what I was watching, yeah, or what I was That's trying cool. to do. That's really cool. And, um, dude, so I applaud the people that have the relationships that, that, you know, their spouse is at, you know, the computer next to them. They've set up two stations, husband's here, wife's here, or whatever it is, vice versa, however it is. Or, you know, in this day and age, you're here and your partner's here. Yeah. I'm not judging. (laughs) Just gotta, it's not always man and wife, man. (laughs) Not all neolithic <laughs> like that <laughs> yeah i don't know how the fuck they do it i mean i don't know i just know my girlfriend and i know if she was next to me training it would be a fucking shit show i, I don't know i just can't i can't see it working but trust like that, that I, you I, can do it because yeah, now that's true. i don't know if she was there and when you couldn't do it you know i don't no, know if she was there in that time you. to see what the struggles were yeah that, no. that's a big part for, well, oh, for sure. It's a big, that, that's a big part, part, you know, having someone that was there. During what did you the say? Trip. Say it again. Just, that's a big what? I, I said that's a big P- part. Part? Part. P with like a P-A-R-T. P-A-R-T. Part. Part. P-A- Joe, how part? are you hearing that? Part? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is the kid that did. I hate that I don't have an accent. Oh, I just said that's a big part because, you know, like. I mean, I don't know about, well, probably not you guys, maybe, but like with my experience, like after the fact, like it's mostly for um, like not the struggles. It's mostly for like, oh, well, you have like this or you have that or I've heard you made money. Like, oh, I'm down to be your girlfriend, you know, and (laughs) and, I I wasn't at that point. Like, yeah, <laughs> I, when I met my wife, it was I. Me and a buddy used to have a funny thing, and we called it the year to date close. And it was what we used to pick up chicks at the bar. Yeah, and if it was ever that, and it works, bro. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you. It works, and it, it, for the women, it will work for you too. Just tell for all the successful women out there. Just tell the man that you want how much money you make a year. Sign, sign. They'll sign up right away. Guaranteed. <laughs> Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Go to that the year to date close. You want to get with and be like, hey, I make 125 a year. What's up? Done. <laughs> um, I don't care if you look like Mrs. Shrek. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it was, it, and we, so we always used to joke about that. We always used to say, oh, did you ask her out? No, nah, man, I didn't do it. Oh, you should have hit her with the year to date close. Just be like, here's my gross year to date right there. And so we'd, uh, we'd always mess around with each other and be like, did you take a pay stub to the bar? What'd you do? And so it was, yeah, dude, that's, how, that's, that's genius. I mean, that's how I showed my wife that I was successful at that point in my life. It was cars, house, clothes, yeah. all that shit. I thought it was materialistic. See, that's where I was wrong was I thought things were materialistic. Like you need to show material items. I would literally kill to just show her, like a big number in my bank account instead of having all that extra shit be like look i look like well, i'm poor i look like i'm poor but see this see that i would have loved to have done that nope i chose the other route just buy everything Joe, we, we we used to have this conversation all the time we used to talk on the phone was that if we had all the money we spent on fucking clothes on like just stup- stupidity stupid shit i like 
you how much more money you'd have in your bank account. You wouldn't even. It just yeah. And a lot of that shit didn't matter. That's the worst part. I've worn one time. Paid a hundred bucks for each of them. Yep, I would have put myself over PDT in like a day, dude. Yeah, I just yeah. If I would have just stopped that, I would have been over PDT in no time. <laughs> well, I didn't start out so, over PDT either. I was under PDT. Oh, really? Yep. Uh, I, didn't, I actually didn't know that. I always thought you just funded yourself like right away. Mm-mm. I had to split my oh, accounts wow. because I needed more day trades. Yep. Oh, yeah. So that's right. I had like oh, I had five, 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 and then uh, three. And yeah. it was like, oh. it, it, and so I would just fucking rotate. Yep. Yeah, be like buy, so, buy, buy, sell, sell, sell. Fuck that account <laughs> stuck. Buy, buy, buy to the next account. <laughs> oh shit, that account's stuck now. <laughs> They're hitting you up like saying like put more money in now. <laughs> You're yeah. over PDT. I blew up three so, of those four accounts. All Jesus, of them. I blew up. So three at this, of the four yeah, so and the fourth one was the saving grace. Holy shit! So at this point, you were just losing money, right? You were taking the courses, you were studying your ass off. Yeah. But every time you you weren't making, I'm guessing you weren't making a dollar. No. Right. It, no. So now, if I made a hundred bucks, like, oh my god, I was fucking ecstatic. Yeah. Really. Like the first time yeah. I ever made forty was at first trade, and I was hooked. And then from there on out, losses. Dude, <laughs> it's everybody. Yeah. I bought dries. Okay. Before it went to fucking <laughs> one twenty. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sold overnight. This is my second profit ever. So the first time I ever made a profit was 40 bucks. And then just after that, it was loss, 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 loss. And then the second profit I ever made was I bought dries, held it. I bought it into the close because it was, it closed strong as shit. And this was the time when OTC still, when they closed strong, they had like an 85% odds that they would gap up the next morning and you could sell into that morning gap and capture that quick volatility and then jump out. And so I was trading with IB because they had the really good executions for OTCs. Um, And so I bought dries uh, at four and sold it the next morning, made like a dollar twenty. Yeah. Thought I was fucking King Kong. Yeah. Thought I, dude. Oh my god. Did it with five hundred shares. I was like, wow. This is it. <laughs> this is wow. It. <laughs> I was like, whoa. And then I had a, I, I had to go to Manhattan, Kansas, which is where Kansas State University is. Yeah. If I ever had to recommend a place to live in Kansas, that would be where I lived. It's fucking cool. Because the entire city or the entire town revolves around the university. And yeah. so it's always like cool. young yeah. life. But, it, dude, it's so awesome. Like the streets are all like these shops and shit, little yeah. bars and everything like that. But it, it's also set back in like a forest. And so it's all trees. And so in the fall, dude, it looks awesome. It looks so cool. That is sick. But yeah, Manhattan, Kansas, if you want to, if you ever want to go and party your fucking balls off, go there during like college all times. Dude, yes, for real. I'm not joking you with you. It is, you would never think you would have fun in a Manhattan, in Kansas. Yeah. And (laughs) so anyway, I had to go there for um, uh, training, for work training the next day. That was the day that Dries ran to 120. And I literally, yeah. I took my, this is how addicted I was, bro. This is how addicted I was to the market. I took my laptop with me. I took my laptop with me and I had it connected to my phone's Wi-Fi, and I had it sitting on the dash of my truck and I was watching Jeez. the stock market while I'm driving. Dude, it's Kansas roads. It's all fucking straight doing yeah. 70 mile an hour. Like, what are you, you going to hit? This up. What are you yeah. going to hit? barbed wire fence all right you're yeah. fine i mean you, what are you gonna you're gonna run into the fence and then just stop in the field okay we're good if i crash i crash i'm not really gonna crash i'll just turn around and get back on the road and so well, after seeing dries you probably wanted to crash bro to dude, drive yourself oh off my bucket. god i so i sold it into I the gap the up i sold yeah. it in the gap up and i was like hell yeah and then it closes like at fucking like 10 or 20 that day yeah and i was like great <laughs> Thanks for that. And so I start doing the math in my head, you know, what, what, what we all do. Fuck, if I would have held that 500 shares. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God, how much would I be up? Jesus, wow. Whoa. And then um, 
and then I go to sleep and then, you know, I wasn't able to be there for the market open because I was having to get ready and get on the road and shit. So I get on the road, I open the laptop, dries as it like 60 at this point, 50, 60. Jesus Christ. And I just remember logging in and looking at it and be like, what? <laughs> yeah. And so that was, um, that was my first introduction to, to like, that was my first real life, like, you got Black it. You Swan, understood. You could supernova. Yeah. Drives was my first. Was my first like, they welcome to cherry. small caps. Yeah. And I was like, yep. whoa. Yep. And, and what type man, of it was something? What type of setups were you like trading back then? Like, was it like those type? <laughs> Couldn't get of the shares to short because everybody had to go with fucking IB. You yeah. know, because you didn't have any any besides like Sure Trader, which ever was notorious like. Hi, welcome to Sure Trader. We're gonna fuck you, and I just want you to know that up front. Oh, thanks. Perfect. Fantastic. I'll take two. I'll take two. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I, and so I wouldn't, there I wouldn't direct- trade there, and so I didn't want to trade there because I was like, no, I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna pay X amount of money Who's every time I place a fucking trade, and this amount of money per month, and this amount. Of, and dude, I was like, no, 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 no. And so I was just trading like I had three interactive brokers accounts under different names um and that one of which was a venom trading account actually before venom was ever popular um oh, wow. it was and um so it was venom which traded through ib and then i had an ib account and this was the time when if you were under the age of 26 you could open a, an ib account with three grand and yeah. oh, so wow. they used to have that and so like yeah. i was i opened it and then um and then I had a Venom trading account, and then I had another IB account that I opened under my wife's name, yep. and then I had an E-Trade account. And so I had all three IB and then E-Trade, and that was it. But I couldn't get the shares to short, so I couldn't short. It was all just dip buying, dip buying overnight. Yeah. Buy, oh, break yeah. out, dip buy. I w- that was my biggest thing is they were like, buy the dip. I'm like, well, what fucking dip do I buy? They're, they all they're dip. All dipping. <laughs> they all dip. When do I buy this fucking dip? And so is that me? <laughs> like, is that a meme of dip the buy? Guy? What is that? <laughs> is that meme of the guy buying the dip and it just keeps dipping down and that and was he me like turns every to time. His tech, he like turns to his journal and he's like, dear journal. <laughs> I lost everything again. <laughs> that, was, that, that is literally my favorite dips. meme ever. <laughs> Dude, that was me every morning. I would just like buy a dip. It would just keep dipping, and then just just turn around. And like, hey, fuck me, fuck me. So what after drives. Say, Harry? Oh, uh, I forget now. To be honest. Okay. <laughs> so it was what setups did I trade? Right? Oh, yeah. Was what that the setup? question? Like, yeah. Like so, it's just dip by like the OTC. I guess it was like panic. No, I loved the OTC panics. That was like the only thing I was consistent at. Um, I tried to get on that like OTC breakout stuff. Yeah. Man, when you could get one, oh, it was good. But when you were wrong, you were you just got stuck and then you couldn't get out until way lower. Yeah, you and got so stuffed. what you got stuffed? Oh yes, all the time. Yeah. Sure. And so Harry, I, Harry, did you even do OTC? Sorry, did you? Were you ever in OTCs or any of that? No, I actually started with shorting. Oh, I really? know. Oh, wow. I know, Gee, and that's where cool. that's where the whole sniper trader came from. Sniper was, trader, because he was he was he was uh, because I remember this because I was in another service, and that's where I met the bear. Actually, yeah, yeah. and I met I, the bear too. Yeah, I, we may have all three been in the same place. I didn't meet you there. No, um, I know what you're talking about, but yeah, I, you know where I'm talking about, though. I ended up meeting everyone <laughs> through Twitter. I had never. Oh yeah. I had never been on any type of service. I said my my perspective was like, I want to do this all myself. I'm not going to listen to anyone. Right. I, I like I don't believe in all this shit. I just want to try it out myself. And um, like, and then I ended up meeting the bear. A lot of people who we kind of had like similar trading styles and I just kind of, I don't know how, but like, I just went straight kind of into, into like Twitter, ended up meeting a bunch of people on Twitter, getting in a bunch of discord groups like that. And people would share. I didn't even know what discord was. 
Yeah. Well, <laughs> I remember sending Alex a DM because I saw him post like a chat room. And I was like, hey, what platform is that? <laughs> Hey, what broker do you use? He yeah. never responded. <laughs> <laughs> he just deletes it. Fuck this dude. I fucked with him one time and I sent it. I sent him that screenshot. I was like, hey, remember me? Oh, yeah. And this was like after MIC started yeah, yeah, yeah. because that was our last DM was me asking him what that, what is that platform? Dude, I'm not a gamer. <laughs> I'm not a gamer either, so I didn't know what Discord was. I didn't know what any of that was. Yeah. And, and so, oh, keep yeah. going. No, oh, so I just met people through these chat rooms. Yeah, and I just I just heard uh, Brian Lee's chat with traders, and it's mm -hmm. crazy. He's talking about our old Discord room with the bear, Brian Lee, a couple other guys. And, I mean, every day. That's so like, funny. It, and, like, this is, like, long before MIC. Like, there wasn't really anything, like – and so we would just all talk to each other. I was in first year university when this was kind of going on. And I thought it was so cool. Like, man, I'm actually in a chat room with other people who like actually know how to trade and actually fucking put the work in. And actually, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't know they existed. I didn't know people were like this. Most of the people on Twitter, I know I followed like Bao. I know I followed Alex, like the generic, like almost that the algorithm picks up where you're like, okay, you follow these people when you sign up. <laughs> Who to follow, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it was crazy. And so like, I learned a lot from those guys as well with shorting. And then um, after a while, uh, shorting just was getting like really, really expensive. And that's when I switched along and all that stuff. But um, I mean, it, it it's crazy like we've all had like different journeys and stuff like that and um you know also like brian lee it's crazy a lot of people out of that discord chat became successful you know and yeah. so i mean that was what i thought was crazy is that like you know you look at brian lee even though like i mean he wasn't in like mic or anything like that or maybe he was i'm not really sure but like you look at brian lee the bear a couple other guys that were in there they all became successful and i think it was because you know me bear we were all putting in the work every single day just like i'm hearing you just like you know you hear james and a lot of other successful successful traders is that you know we were all obsessed we were willing to put in the time the work the effort that we were willing to endure the mental pain the goddamn mental pain that comes with <laughs> it that no one talks about anymore you know that is friggin tough and hard and you know it's it's unbelievable to me to just like you know just to be kind of also where i am as well to like even think about where i came from because it's crazy when you look back and even think about it you know but i guess my point is that like you know you put in the work and and you just keep going and that's kind of what we did and that was kind of my journey as well a lot of just putting in the work every single day you know yeah Oh, yeah. that's what's cool about joe i mean that's what's cool about you man is like you have put in the work and like you have a similar story to a lot of people because everybody i think that gets into trading has that but there's always that underlying difference of like you were working you had a family you had all this and i mean at, at this point in your career you were just bouncing room to room right and you weren't finding consistency so what was it for you that took you from like a, I like need to figure this out now. And like, what changed for you? Like, was there a person you met? Was it joining a group, MIC or something like that? Like, what was that next step for you to get out of the, the guessing phase and the gambling phase kind of thing? And yeah, were you so, even profitable before mm -hmm. MIC and all that stuff? I was, yep. And mm -hmm. that was where, so what turned me profitable was day trading actually dug me in a hole because I kept trying to long everything. And I, because I couldn't get the shares to short. Yeah. So I was mm -hmm. like, well, let me buy it, which is the worst fucking decision. Oh, I can't short it. Well, let me try to find a long. Yep. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And so, uh, I, um, signed up to this like swing trading service again, because I don't know it. Yeah. Let me learn from somebody that does. Yeah. That actually paid off. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> and um, I actually learned a lot from that uh, swing trading service. And that took me out of the red, like, 
I think it was like, I it was like 10 K in the red. And because, you know, I'd make some and I'd lose some and I'd make yeah. some and then I'd lose some. And then at this point, this was like my all time low is I was like 10 K in the red and I hadn't made it. It was just like my PL curve was like, eh, 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 eh. Yeah. and it was like st here, <laughs> right here is where everything changed. And then it just went, oh, <laughs> and then, and I was still in, I was still in another chat room too, where I was using uh, like their adopted things there. This was not MIC. This was before MIC yeah. too. And, and so, and this was actually before I ever met or, or I was ever in that room where Harry met the bear and we all were talking amongst each other. It was all in that, uh, it was before that time. And so I finally got consistent by swing trading and I swing traded and small you know. caps from the long side and wow. i would find these like super beaten down stocks that you know weren't pennies and um that had a history of spiking yep. and i would buy them when they were like heavily beaten down and just wait like and how much lower can this thing go I right got it was pretty much yeah. that it was like okay yeah. it has a history of doing press releases at this time it has a history of doing this is a history of doing this let me long it and so i'd buy it and i just spread it out i'd pick like my top four or five and i'd buy them and then i would just wait and then like i'd get offered on at times and things like i mean that was just you know that's small yeah. caps naturally when you're holding long on a small cap you're probably going to get offered into like it's, <laughs> yeah, it's coming. Some point, yeah. you're asking yep. for it and so i always <laughs> had this thing like don't buy anything above five bucks because they had a tendency to offer and yeah. so I was like, don't buy anything above five bucks. They have a tendency to offer. So, okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to hold anything over $5 that, you know, looks beaten down because they'll still offer. And yeah, because dude, you're not, you don't want to buy anything under a dollar either because they could do a yep. reverse split. Tops. So dude, I was like, I was like <laughs> one yeah. to five, yeah. like this tight little range. I was like, I'm going to buy those. And my sweet spot was like two to three bucks. If I could find something that was beaten down like two to three bucks, I was like, okay, they in this at this point i had learned enough fundamentals to understand mvphs rules and things yeah. like that to where i knew they couldn't offer on me anymore and so i buy them when they're stupid beaten down i know they can't offer on me until they run it up and so i would just buy in the first day it gaps sell it i wouldn't even hold to see how far it would go i would just sell the gap as soon as it got the gap i'd sell the gap and that was what got me consistent and um and that and probably so, still works now like that definitely works yeah now. No, i absolutely. know that it still works now there are people who do that right now oh for sure it fucking works yeah it works people but understand be... the rules they understand the rules of the game and how it is played and they yep. they do that on the side yep and so it was it was more passive income because i i didn't have to be there every day um and so now that i'm in large caps dude and i'm going back to swing trading dude i'm just going back to my roots to what like feels comfortable yeah um and and so in small caps i started short selling because i finally made enough money to get an account over pdt and i could finally go get a broker that had the shares to short once that started i mean it was just i was hooked <laughs> from there i was hooked and but dude the still the most consistency i ever found was in was in buying That's those so funny. seriously beaten down plays not because i couldn't do these other like you know like the gap and craps it was my that was my thing was gap and craps like i knew everything to know about the yeah. performance of a gap yeah, you're and such crap. a data guy yeah. how they work i knew how they worked and yeah and how the algos would run them and when to avoid them until RKD came around or, or what was it? RK, R, RK, RKD, RKDA, RKDA. Yes. Yes. Just Fuck the, you, Harry. Right here, right here. I know what you did to me right there. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, me and James were on the phone in the RKDA trade. He was like, yeah, I covered. I'm like, what? When? I'm still short. And and like, he's out. like standing in the kitchen making a coffee and i'm still over here i'm like holy fuck this just limited up and i'm stuck from where he's like really oh man i covered a minute ago <laughs> Dude, i was, I was feel in like my, telling uh... me you saw something that maybe made you want to cover 
I was, I was in my like, Barbie fucking Mustang and I was just driving I was along like, and you're, I'm like, you. you're still in that shit. Yeah. Oh, dude, oh, oh, dude, I'm already out of it. <laughs> that was the day I knew I lost you to large caps. I knew you were done. I, I, dude, I seriously, it. when RKDA happened, I was like, I'm tired of this shit. <laughs> yep. I'm tired of this. And because I, remember, I remember that whole situation going into that because you guys were, you guys were blessed so much with their oh, everything was then anything. Cause just was, gap and fade, gap was, and fade. I remember, and yeah. I remember the same stocks like every single day where they would gap up and just instantly wash out out of the open. I think there was only one that had recovered from a gap, and that was YUMA that had washed yeah. out of the open the same day that DPW was running. I have like a really photographic memory. So yep. the same day that DPW was running, YUMA also washed out as well. And um, I just remember um, – just that was like kind of the only one like there wasn't a lot running like things were just being pumped out of the blue it was really a liquid at that time that summer was very very slow and i yeah i remember that that most of them would just end up fading all day and then rkda had that super low float i don't know if they did a reverse split or uh, if the stock was just super low it I was it was during the reverse split runners time it was rkda fucking yeah. Um, there was that whole list of them that just so low was going on at the time. Like everything was just yep. killing yep. us. Dude, I was back then, Harry, I was done trading by nine. Well, like was Joe like was on the phone. And, and all those ones. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Dude, we used to, I used to wake up early and we'd be in Joe and another guy would trade on the phone and like we'd be done. Like we'd, I would be short at like 7 a.m., would hold. And then by like nine o'clock, everything was toast. Mm -hmm. Those were the, I mean, that's the easiest trading has ever been in my career. And then, after RKDA is when everything actually changed. That's when that, that pre-market shit just like, Dude, that's when it started. Me, hurt. It hurt. That was like, small caps had never been the same since RKDA, in my opinion. Like that yeah. move was what put zombies on the map. Oh like, my God. That move, what, because what it did, RKDA broke the death line and then it reclaimed it. And then it yep. did, and then it just hung there until right yeah. at 1030 and then all of a sudden boom yeah. and i was yeah. like whoa hold what the f and so dude i was at that whole thing i was sizing into that because it had been that i remember so yeah. that was my entire strategy was was gap and fade that was it i'd short them in the morning and i'd put orders and i would leave and because they just when they zombied it was just yeah. like eh, it's not enough you know it, <laughs> yeah it was like <laughs> it was really the reason that they were zombying was i think that all the people who had lost money in the morning just started buying together again like a band of misfits and then it, they ended up getting <laughs> probably did i oh did it i was, that, there was so a... it was when that happened man that was finally when i was like yeah all right i'm I got to find something else to do. And then, and then, uh, and then, uh, Brian Rivera or trader tax CPA, me and him had met at a meetup in Dallas and we just kind of buddied up and just started chatting because he did the same thing I did in small caps. He shorted yeah. the gaps, just waited for him to fade and he'd swing it too. And, um, and so me and him were like, dude, that's, Hey, we do the same thing. And that's how I became friends with the bears because that's the bears favorite setup. Yeah, but the bear would is, huh? the bear would short him at like six a.m. and he'd have all these pre-market fucking top ticks, and then it would just bleh. and then and it, I was like, what the? and dude, I I thought trading was so easy back then. Like, dude, I got yeah, my account was, over PDT because I'd wake up. It was the same thing. It was like seven a.m. I'd just short a random ass stock, and it would just be like, like all the way down. Yeah, like, oh, this is sick. All you had to do was <laughs> just let it run. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I loved yeah. life. I'd make like a dollar a share. I'm like, this is so easy. Yep. <laughs> what do you mean 10% 10, 10 of traders make it? So, uh, I mean, at this point, so you had been making money for some time, right? And like you got into small caps and you just got into shorting and all that. And you had like, I, cause I remember like you were very processed and data oriented in small caps. Yeah. And you had been doing well and you were in MIC. Obviously at this point you were that, that head moderator too. 
what was it was it really rkda or like what kind of pushed you to the point of like all right i need to transition now myself into like large caps and what was it was it just the fact of like the frustration like i mean i know why but i want to <laughs> i like hearing it but like what what was it for you that that got you there so it was that summer that it was just it was really dry there was nothing to play even long side or short side yep. i don't like trading pre-market it's not my favorite place to be. Um, mm -hmm. And so I don't like doing that. And then, so it was, okay, I have to trade pre-market. Uh, I have to wake up at 4 a.m. my time to get ready for, or no, sorry, 3 a.m. my time to get ready for this, to get ready to do this. And I had to be there. It was, I had to wake up at 3 a.m. in my time, 3 a.m. my time and be there for the entire market pre-market to get the borrows that were cheap enough or because they would just, they would come and then they'd run out and it'd be like, oh. and so you couldn't get the shares to short. Uh, it would, dude, it was just, it was just stagnant. And all the profits after you accumulated all up, I would always end up giving back like 30 or 40% in locates. Yeah. And it wouldn't, it wasn't commissions or anything. Cause that was at the point where I'd learned how to do fantasy orders and I didn't have any problems with commissions or EC, it, I, I got all the ECN rebates and all that stuff. I didn't have problems with that. I had problems with the locates and, and so it's crazier I, now than it was back then. Oh, I know. <laughs> Way I know. Crazier. And so I, I got so sick and tired of fighting that I was like, I, you know, I've got a wife, I got two kids. She works, she does her own thing. Um, I, you know, the, the kids are here with me in the mornings and then I'm doing this and I'm trying to short these fucking small caps that I got to wake up at 4 a.m. to get these fucking borrows because they always run out because these son of a bitch and brokers never do it. The, and then I, it, it was, dude, it was just a, and then I went, okay, how much do I have to pay for this stupid platform every month? How much, I have to have to pay for a scanner now. I need a scanner because I hate looking, I hate looking at the chat room and waiting for somebody to post a scanner because by that time, the borrow was gone because it would be like, okay, what's popping? Oh, pff, well, fuck now all the borrows are gone. Yay. <laughs> and then, and so I wanted to see it. So I had to pay for a scanner. I had to pay for a news service because I wanted to make sure that I had the news. I, it, dude, I was like, I want to do all this on my own. I want to do that. I want to do this. And so I had to have all these things. And basically it was like at that time. And then I met Brian and been talking to him and, and it was like, uh, and he posted like one chart of like, Tesla or something like that, where he'd longed it at four in the options and sold it at 17. And it was like intraday, intraday, he bought it at four and sold it at 17. And I was like, are you telling me I can trade <laughs> Tesla and make 300%? How the fuck do you do that? Dude, Brian's a low key, low key. And free. Brian is a fucking good trader. Like, he's yeah. nasty. And so yeah, very, very I was trader. like, mm -hmm. how. And he goes, it was just, it was that, it was that moment. He was like, I'll show you. And I was like, I'll listen. And <laughs> <Take my hand. laughs> yeah. And, and uh, that was it, man. I, it, because it was like, can I apply the same MIC process in large caps? Absolutely. Does this work better in large caps? Absolutely. Can I make the same percent gains that I can in small caps and in large caps? Absolutely. Okay. Well, fuck, I'm sold. Tell me no more. And then they announced zero commission. I was like, Oh my God. Fuck yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and so it was like, dude. I can trade on a platform. I can pay what in commissions I can dude. Literally I put 30% back in my bottom line immediately, immediately by going to large caps. Yep. Immediately. I, and so it was like that. I was like, okay, at the end of the year, I make X amount of money. And instead of, you know, I, I give away 30% to fucking locates. I give away 40% to the government. I keep 30%. That yep. fucking sucks. <laughs> so all you're telling me, all I have to do is switch from small caps to large caps and I keep another 30%. And so the government takes 40 and I keep 60. <gasps> I'm listening. I'm listening. I, and it, I was funny like, too. done, sold. It's funny too, because as long as I'm, we've all known each other now it's like i think large caps fits your personality so much more because you are so systematic and like data driven and like you have you like 
it's funny. Like I consider you to follow the MIC process to a T. You set your lines, you set your orders, and that's that's fucking it. You just yeah. do that. And I feel like in large caps, it actually works better than in small caps. And like it works it great does. in small caps, of course. But in, in large caps, it's like line to a T. But yeah. you know, it it's I love it. And now, so you've been with MIC for what the whole time, right? Since day one. Literally the day I still have the receipt from the day yeah, day one the day one subscription. Yeah. Did it, it there was like a hundred of us that first day. I I remember yeah. that first day like it was fucking yesterday. Yep. But how if you could have any way, not even just making money trading wise, how has MIC impacted your life positively? Like what has it done for your life or negatively? But how has it impacted your life? What is, what has it really done for you? Um well so it it eventually gave me a platform to teach um, because again, I've watched everyone's content out there. I've watched every single person's content except for one guy. And he pronounces the word dollars like dollars. Dollars. He says dollars. <laughs> and I've never watched a single thing that that person teaches because I know it's fake as fuck. And so I, I will never do it. I will not. That's the only content of anybody out there that I have never watched i wouldn't even i wouldn't i wouldn't even watch it if somebody gave me that content to be like here you want to watch this just to see what it's about no i'll fucking i'll I'll take 16 hours of my life back and go do something else yeah i'd rather go haul trash for a fucking living than watch that shit (laughs) like i (laughs) it's so um it was so i finally got the platform to teach but i also mic was was uh it was community it was it was the fact that i can finally freely talk in a chat room without the head dude being like excuse me that's meant for this place excuse (laughs) me we don't talk like that in here excuse me only stocks and because dude if you if you want to talk about like dude we're always posting food pictures if you want to talk about fucking food recipes if you want to talk about recipes i'll fucking talk about recipes yeah. And somebody else will talk about recipes and you can always find somebody online. You can always find somebody in the middle of the fucking night online talking about yeah. something. Yeah. That you can. No, literally you can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so it was, dude, it was like, it, 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 it was just, it was like the, I was like, this is fucking awesome. There's always and, liquidity in the chat room. There's always liquidity in the chat room. Always liquidity. <laughs> <laughs> And so um, we did, they did the first Q and A and I'll never forget it. I was, they did the first weekend Q and A and people were going to come in and ask questions. And it was Bao, Alex, Tosh and Nico. And, um, and dude, I was like an open Q and A. What? Oh (laughs) yes. Because it would usually be like a webinar and the person doing the webinar would read one question, rant for 30 minutes, read one question, rant for 30 minutes, and we're done. And there'd be like 200 unanswered questions. I'd be like, ah, that was great. And so they did, they did all these questions. And, you know, it was like every single question got answered. Everything was in the threads. Um, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. And so as people started bringing their questions in, I was like, I know the answer to that. I can help out here. Yeah. And so (laughs) I started seeing a bunch of people ask questions. I was like, I know this. Wow. And so I just started responding and I was faster than Tosh because (laughs) dude, I was so addicted. I was so addicted that I was just like reading these questions. Like I was like, and I would just type it out and I'd beat Alex and Tosh to the answers every single time. And then they would end up just like doing the arrow. Like yeah. just point up, this guy, he got it, that guy. And, um, and so my answers were getting pinned like by ever by Alex, by Tosh. They were just getting pinned to the channel because it was like, that's what they were saying. And I was just writing that shit down and putting it back and then asking my own questions too. And, um, and then the San Jose beat up came the boot camp, the first ever boot camp. Uh, and they had nobody to do any kind of sound. And I have a background in music and music production. Um, and at this time I had made a couple videos 
um, and gotten a slight amount of people were like, okay, this guy kind of knows what he's doing. And, and it wasn't until a video I made that was, that was literally just showing people how to make your chart on DOS look like Bao's on Realtek. That's all I did. That's all I did. And Bao went fucking bonkers. He was like, this is fucking glorious. I've had DOS for like 20 years and I never knew you could do that. I was, I was like, dude, it's just a part. <laughs> so at that figure. point, he was like, uh, he was like, are you coming to San Jose? And I was like, actually, no, I was not planning on it. And uh, he, he goes, well, just wondering, just wanted to meet you. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> and that just kind of left it at that. And then, uh, and so I just stopped and I was like, all right, I'll just do my thing. And then they were talking and they were continuing on and everything. And, and, um, and I was like, you know, I'm going to reach out to him again. And so I texted him and, and, or uh, DM'd him and I, and I was like, Hey, uh, I don't know if you guys have anybody for this already, but I have a vast experience in past in, and even the equipment too, to bring it, if you need me to, uh, to San Jose to run your sound, to do this meetup. How did you plan on running the sound? And he goes, what? You know how to run sound? I was like, yeah. And then he goes, call Tosh, call Nico now. And, <laughs> and so I just went to the meetup and ran the sound. And then, and then it, was, it was from there on out. It was, like that it was like, you know, Tosh, Tosh I, it was the weirdest conversation I've ever had next to a urinal. But uh, we're literally at this San Jose meetup and like me and Tosh, like I go to the bathroom and then Tosh walks in and goes, hey, what's up, Joe Kelly? I'm like, yeah, hey, how are you, man? Nice to see you. Hey, fantastic. What you got over there? I'm just kidding. All right. <laughs> and we're standing there and he goes, hey, so uh, Val wanted me to talk to you about this and Alex too, but uh, I mean, how would you feel about, you know, maybe maybe make, making some content for MIC? And I was like, you're taking a oh, piss. Okay. Yeah. yeah, dude, that was it. It's like, he was like, <laughs> yeah, just help out in the chat room, you know, where we can't, you know, when we're not there with something, you know, you, how do you feel about that? I was like, all right, bro. We, we, we didn't have moderators cool. back then, right? Like we barely, nope. we didn't, I don't even, no, nothing. Nope. And it got so out of hand one day that Alex DM'd me and he goes, do you want to be a moderator? This is getting fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, I was like, okay. And so I'd been on all these other services and I'd seen how you moderate a yeah. chat room with, with the other button. service. You just get fucking gagged. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, what is this fucking BDSM porn? Why is it called <laughs> gagging? And, and so it, it was, I mean, that was it. That was it from there. There was, there was nothing. It was just, I saw an opportunity to teach, gave everything back that I could. Uh, you know, there was some questions that were way above my pay grade that I couldn't handle. And, but it was, it was that I could respond. And then Alex Tosh and, and Bao and Nico, they were all like, yeah, that's the right answer. And it wasn't like the guru just rewording my answer just so the yeah. guru could say it. <laughs> and I was like, I would be like, bitch, you just said what I said. Why not just say like that guy? And, and it was like, from there on out, it was, I was always loyal past that point. I I feel like Uns at that point unsubscribed too. Unsubscribed to every other single service and just stayed MIC. I feel like at this point too, like you were a good trader, but like when you started teaching and like helping others is actually what put you into that next step of like, oh shit, like I need to be better. Like I need to be good. And like you have to live by the example at that point. Yeah. You. Yep. I mean, you can't. You can't say some shit like I think it's a good short right here and then long it. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like. Like I've seen some people do. Like, like. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I'm for bitch, sure. we see you. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> looks like a good short. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> what? Looks like yeah. a good long, short, fifty thousand shares. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh -huh. <laughs> I have to say, out of all the time that I've been in this industry, and like, I wonder if you guys agree, but I think now more than ever, it's, the trading industry is probably the the shadiest it's ever been. Like, and there were some sketchy ass rooms back in the day, 
But like, I think now Stratton I... Oakmont was a more reputable situation than <laughs> than Twitter is nowadays. It has like, to be because like, I yeah. you see criminal. It's not even I don't know what you'd call it. It's just you see shit out there, and it's almost like my heart breaks for these new traders falling for it because we've all been there. We've all been the yep. guy, and now I think it's harder because it's so out there. Like back when I first started. Instagram didn't have that many ads. Like there was a, you know, everyone knows the ads you'd see, the leopard and the Lambo, and it was great. But I mean, now it's like so in your face. <laughs> Every YouTube video you go on, it's the same shit. It's just this, the same thing. So it's, it, I don't know. Yeah. I just feel like now it's changed so much. And, and I don't know. And I guess it, it was that leopard and Lambo advertising type of marketing that got me into the market. It's true. It, I, mean, bro, I mean, regardless of like, the content that I actually learned from that pretty good, actually, believe it or yeah. not. And I'll never dog it, but yeah. it, I agree. but it's the advertising that was always the funny part, but, um, <laughs> it's just, and it's so true. It's the leopard and the Lambo. And, and, You're like, I could own a leopard. I, oh I my God. Leopard. I can become like Dan Bilzerian. Oh yes. <laughs> it's funny because <laughs> I would say it has to be 90 to 95% of traders are into this because of that, that those ads, Not, the same, especially yeah. retail. Yeah, oh I, yeah. I mean, oh, all retail. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I because there's I those people that went to school for finance because they're like, yeah, my dad worked for a, uh, yeah. he worked for JP Morgan on the, uh, on the hedge fund side. And, um, uh, you know, I, I got a trust fund and, and I got signed up through your service and, you know, we, so we saw things and yeah. <laughs> It's funny because I just cut, I literally just cut some kid like that just literally today. <laughs> some kid who I told him he knows what I do or whatever, and he was yeah. like, kind of had the same same voice, same everything. And <laughs> I guess I guess now, like looking back on that part of your career, if you could give yourself advice or any new traders at all for that matter, what is like the biggest like call it like little like bullets you would give people like yeah. if you do these things, it'll get you there. Uh, well, I wish MIC existed back then. Yeah, it would have saved the fuck. That would have saved me a lot. So I'm not going to say there's any like list of things that you could do on your own to save yourself. My best advice is if you're watching this today, you have access to MIC. You have access to a service and to an education service that's going to teach you literally everything you need to know in order to become a consistently profitable trader and making money on your own in a self-sufficient manner without having to depend on somebody else to tell you every day what to look for. We're running these scams right here. I like this $3 area. And uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and long it. Uh, like the pre-market breakout. Like... Fuck around. And like, the buy button, boys. Yeah. Finger <laughs> on the buy. Did you guys eat well? Did you both sleep uh, well? Yeah. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I ate well. I had ramen last night because yeah. I longed one of your picks, you <laughs> fucking dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> my wife. And so it was, and so it, anyway, no, so. If I could tell anybody, if there was something I could go back and tell myself to do or to not do, it, it, would, it would solely be, uh, well, there's a couple of things, but so if you come to MIC now and you've had prior education, let's, let's talk to the people that have prior education that are still inconsistent looking for something better in their trading. Forget all the shit that you think you fucking know. You know nothing. You know nothing. You're not consistently profitable before now, and you're coming to MIC, curb your ego. No shame in it. No shame in it. We ain't going to call you out. We don't care. We don't care. We don't care where you came from, what you've done, whose tits you've sucked off of. Nobody gives a shit, okay? Nobody cares what you think you know. Come to MIC with an entirely open mind to just learn the simplest fucking process you've ever been taught, the simplest process to be able to go short or long in any market. Yeah. Large cap, small cap. I don't give a fuck if you're trading a Forex room. It'll work there too. And whatever it is, forget all. That is my biggest crutch was 
when MIT started, I brought all these things I thought I knew, okay? And I knew a lot. And I knew very little about the things that really made you exceptional. And that's where Bao and Alex helped me immensely was they were like, look, you know a fuck ton, but you need to simplify it down. You're, you, you're, you're, you're focusing on way too much. Keep it simple. Dude, I was on the phone one time. I'll never forget. I was sitting outside of fucking Panda Express and I was on a phone call with Alex and I was like, how am I on a phone call with AT09 Trader, this dude that's <laughs> fucking done? How am I? How is this real? I've got Bow's <laughs> cell phone number. I'm on the phone with Alex. What's happening right now? What am I doing? How did I get here? And on the phone, he goes, dude, you are like, you know too much and you focus on too much, you need, to, you need to whittle it down to the very important things that are the only the important things. And dude, I was, I like prided myself on knowing a lot of just random shit and always having an answer that it could be an educated answer, right? It was an educated answer, but it yeah. didn't help me. It didn't help me get really far. So MIC prior to MIC is consistent with MIC. I went from steady to like, it went from, ah, it looks good. And then like all of a sudden blow out earnings, just boom, <laughs> through the roof. And so it, it, but the way that that came was simplifying everything I did, everything I thought I knew. I had to forget all that random shit that I thought I knew, all those random things I thought worked. Oh, maybe there's an edge if it does this, if it yeah. does that, or if it does this. Well, no, okay, it happened one time. No, there's no edge in it. It just happened to be something that you saw at that moment. It never fucking repeated itself again. <laughs> and so it would, I, but I would memorize those things. I would remember those things. I'm like, Harry, I have a photographic memory. Like I can remember a fucking scanner. If I see a pot, if this is the hot chick today, I remember all other stocks that ran with it because yep. it photographic from there. Yep, me too. <laughs> and it was, uh, it, so I would tell anybody that's, inconsistent that has been through the ringer has been through the the washing machine of of services uh to forget everything you think to know come to come to mic with an open mind and open book and a blank sheet of paper and just start fucking taking notes watching the content and you got to live it breathe it and sleep eat everything mic yeah and videos and all and like, it's not like Alex is asking us to go and like make this after hours podcast and just give MIC like, you know, like right. none of us are forced to, to do this. It's because we all believe in the MIC process. <clears throat> and we also, the, the reason why we believe is because that's what makes us money at the end of the day, you know? Yeah, we're definitely not getting paid to be here. I can fucking tell you that. Yeah. Much. <laughs> I get paid in Bud Light or whatever. I, I mean... It's true. I mean, I, I feel like out of all the mods, like the more we talk to everybody, it's like the same thing. Every single moderator that has joined the team has dropped their ego, yep. has busted their ass watching content. I mean, that's look, part if, of being if, a mod too. That was part of yeah. it. Anytime we promote a mod now, Alex always asks me too. And anytime I said something, I'll always ask Alex or Bauer or, any, or Tosh or any of them. I'm like, dude, what do you think about this? Alex says the same thing to me. It's just a sounding board. But what you said was you can't have an ego. Every mod has came in and, and either had an ego at a point and then lost it. But the people yeah. that have an ego, you'll never be, you'll never be a part of the community. Sorry. No, you'll I mean, probably never be a good trader. <laughs> you'll be an outcast. I, I, I don't, yeah, I don't care how good you are. You'll be an outcast because of the ego. Yeah. That's just I, don't, I don't think I've met. I don't think I've met a good trader or like, I mean, likable trader that has an ego like that too, or that just hasn't had those moments that, that you talk about those, like, I don't want to say sleepless nights, but those frustrated times where like, you oh, just had dude. to put everything you, you had those, into it. You call those head in hands moments. <laughs> That's a head in your is, hands moment. Yeah. Mine is in the shower. The bed, head in your hands. And you're like, can I fucking do this? Can I continue with this? That was me. About six months before MIC started, took the biggest loss of my career, and the best you, lesson I could get from quit? that. Oh, I was borderline, bro. I was literally borderline quitting. Borderline. Took two weeks off. Um, 
it was my daughter's second birthday, the day that it happened. Uh, so I had to go jump in a trampoline park after I lost 50% of my entire accounts in one second. Are you second. sure you're just jumping off a bridge? Dude, I'm just like jumping. I'm just like, <laughs> okay. happy birthday. <laughs> no. No, I'm, I'm, just, I'm the saddest person in a trampoline park. If anybody <laughs> can go to a trampoline park and not smile, it was me that day. <laughs> Dude, it was... It's like, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's the same thing. It's like, you know, I've never seen a, I've never seen someone, I've never seen one cry on a jet ski, right? All you do is laugh. He cried. He's like, what? <laughs> I've never seen anybody cry in a trampoline park. Yeah, I was borderline about to cry. <laughs> I, dude, like literally, I, it was the most money I'd ever lost in my entire life. It was more money than I ever made in a day for sure. Uh, because I just compounded a lot of small wins. Yeah. I never. I had like big parabolic winners until I traded Tesla on the big first red day. That was my first ever really like solid, solid, solid win. And I would just normally, it, it, would, it was 300, yeah. 500, 700, 1K. And it was just a compound of that stuff because dude, that stuff adds up. Yeah. If you can consistently do that, it adds up faster than any 20,000 this day. Minus two, minus five, minus one, minus three, minus three, minus three, forty k, yeah. minus five, minus five, minus. Yeah. Seven. And it's like, dude, it up fat. I, I will take, I will take five hundred dollars a day every single day for the rest of my fucking life to not do that emotional like minus oh, twenty yeah. plus forty. Yeah. I, dude, we, I will, we preach it every day. Yeah, yeah, I will, I will take it every single day. But it was. A 50% loss on my accounts and, and it was, I almost quit. I took two weeks off and, the, and the, the, the promise I made to myself was, if you take two weeks off and you don't feel in your heart like you need to come back, you're done. You're done. So I took a full two weeks off. I didn't open a single like message. I didn't open anything like trading wise. Like I just went back to like my own bubble. And uh, I did not tell my wife how much I lost. Um, to this day, or does she know now? To this day. And uh, <laughs> I made it back, but Jesus Christ. Uh, so anyway, two weeks after that, uh, fast forward, I, I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, it's Monday. And every single day, even the days that I tried to not get up, I was up. Yep. 6 a.m. ready to go and i'm i had to force myself to not like i just had to go do something like i was awake ready to go and so i had to go take a shower get ready and then and what i would do is i would just drive to starbucks mm -hmm. and i would i'd get a coffee see alex <laughs> and i would be like yeah, right <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd get a coffee and then i would just drive around until i had to go to work and I would just think about shit. I would just think about, you know, I lost X amount of money before, you know, I, and it was just, it was a moment where I literally, like that was the first time I ever, I ever thought about like, like legitimately ever had a thought that I was like, man, maybe I'm better off not even here. Maybe I'm yeah. better off like not even around. Yeah. I think, I think my family might make more money if I was dead. I got a pretty good life insurance policy. <laughs> and, and so I was like, man, I, and, but it just every day, every day that I woke up at during that two weeks, I was up and ready to go at market open at well before market open. I wasn't like five minutes before market open showing yeah. up. What's it? Yeah. Like <laughs> hand, I wasn't doing it on the I buy button, baby. Yeah. I, was, I wasn't hitting the horn. Like <laughs> here comes cinnamon to the center stage. We're going to buy SGDX at 190. Let's go 190, 190, 190, 195, 197, 195. Yeah. It was like, I wasn't some fucking auctioneer. I was, and, <laughs> dude, it was, I was ready to go every single morning and I had to force myself to take the time off. And and that was what it was. I had to get two weeks under my belt to get that disconnect. And ultimately, when, when everything came back down to it, I was like, I have to continue this. I have to continue this. I will not be beaten by the market. I will not be beaten. See, it's what's uh, fucked is like people, people don't talk about those like yeah. the, down, the down days. Like I, I don't even know how to describe the feeling because I've had the days. Where RKDA I, I wasn't said, even my lowest low. 
Like, dude, I'm telling no, you, like dude. RKDA emotionally, I know we just talked about that a minute ago. That wasn't even my lowest low. That was not my lowest low. Intel sat. The ticker I. That was what I lost 50% of my account on. And it's, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it for the rest of my life. All the lessons I learned in that. The, first, the number one lesson, and so you asked earlier, what was an other lesson that I could go back and tell somebody? So it would to kind of full circle into that um, was fundamentals mean nothing until the technicals confirm it. Fundamentals yep. don't mean jack shit until the technicals tell you it's time. Exactly. And that, I, the technicals in that trade never said short it, but I kept shorting because <laughs> that fucking company, all they did, I was again, too smart for my own good. Okay. I'm not saying I was like intelligent. I was just yeah. too educated enough. I knew too much to, to like, I knew how to dig too deep to get super biased. And I dug and I dug and I dug and all this fucking company did, all they did, they're a satellite company. All they did is they would run up a fuck ton of debt, open a new subsidiary, sell the debt to that subsidiary, and then start to reaccumulate more and more and more and more and more, open a new one, dump it into them, sell it to them. And they would just creatively move the money. They were billions of dollars in debt in the red. Couldn't, they were so upside down. Guess what? They went bankrupt and listed on the OTCs now. <laughs> but I couldn't outlast it. I could not outlast it. Yeah. I could not outlast it. That is a big like supply and demand factor. I was fucking right. <laughs> yeah. So, where you- I was right. I was right. Where you, but where you can be right. But yeah. like, it's like, it's one of those like big short moments where it's like, has the crowd done the same type of due diligence yeah. that you have done, right? Are all these people who are pressing the buy button as educated as you are short? And the answer right. is no, probably not. They probably yeah. aren't. But people are still buying. People are still buying the hot chick. People are still going up because until there's a reason for them to sell, they won't. And yeah. that is a big, big, big <laughs> lesson in my, in my trading career where I have noticed that's why the death candle works so well. That yep. is why the MIC process works so well. Because until longs need a reason to sell, until they get scared. There's shit, no reason, yeah. And it's just like <laughs> yeah. shorts on the other side for me longing. Yep. Until shorts need a reason to cover, until it breaks high day, until it's made a higher low, until we have shorts upset, there's no reason for that stock to go over highs. And there's no reason for FOMO longs to go in and chase that. And that yep. is a big, big, big lesson that has helped yep. me a million times over and I know it's helped you as well. I know it's helped James too. And that's a big, big lesson that's helped me. The second lesson from that trade was I was down probably, I was immediately down in this trade. Like as soon as I started the trade, like I started shorting like two weeks before it ever had the big day. Yeah. I was wow. in anticipation of their earnings. Okay. And so, you know, everybody knows the, the, the thing of, of, you know, don't trade in upcoming events. So that's not the lesson here. Everybody knows that. I'm not going to say that reiterate the same shit that everybody fucking says. Um, <laughs> the other lesson is I was immediately wrong in the trade. And it goes against me and goes against me and goes against me. And I continue to average in. I'm scaling in. I didn't start big. I, I, like, I knew that this could take time. And... It immediately goes against me. I'm about halfway sized into it at this point. And it has one really big tank day. And I remember being up, literally, I remember the number to the penny, $186.47. I remember being up 186. And in the same day, I was red again. And so my best advice is, this is always my rule. If the trade immediately goes against you and then it gives you an opportunity to break even, get the fuck out. Always. Get always. the fuck out. I don't care where it's at on the chart. Do sure. not reassess the trade and pretend it's a new trade because you have all this like, 
rebound dust all over you. You know, you you're trying to you're trying to bump uglies with this girl in the club, but you still got this <laughs> other bitch's lipstick all all on your neck, and you're like, yeah. no. And she's like, what's that on your neck? You're like, don't worry, I'm just short a lot of shares of Intel Sat right now. <laughs> like it. <laughs> And it, dude, it just doesn't fucking work. And so the best advice I have is, and it goes in both ways. Okay. It goes in both ways. If the trade goes vastly against you and you have an opportunity to break even or lose a little bit of money at that point, let's say you had the worst fucking discipline in the world. You're the worst. If it gives you that opportunity, take it. It's a blessing from above. The good yeah. Lord above is looking down on you saying, you got an opportunity to get out. Here's your opportunity. Take it because the blessings are few and far between folks, let me tell you. And the second side is when you're up a lot and you don't take any money and then it goes back to break even, don't think it's going to come back up. Don't think it's going to go back or come back down or whatever it is. Don't think your P&L is going to rise again. If you go through what you call the floor amount, okay, it's a floor amount. If you're doing any algorithmic trading or anything like that, it's called a floor and basically, let's say you go and you set a target and you say, okay, once I'm up 500 bucks, if it gives back $250 at any point, I'm out. And so once you get up X amount of money, you have to set this point that I will not allow myself to give back this amount of money of these potential profits, unrealized profits. Because unrealized, man, it's like, it's like sitting at the blackjack table and you just keep winning. You keep winning. You keep winning. None of those are realized gains until you stand up from that table and walk the fuck away to the cashier and cash out your chips and exactly. walk out that bitch. It's exactly. all fake money at that point. Why do you think they give you fucking poker chips and not real money? It's yeah. the same thing as stocks. It, it's not real. You're literally not sitting there going, this is a $500 bill that I just bet. This is 10 grand. I didn't know it's a fucking poker chip. Yeah. It, it's the same well, thing as true. stocks, man. I've, I've given back. I remember days where I was up like thousand bucks Thousands. or whatever. Yeah. Thousand, yeah. And, and I just remember giving it back because it was unreal. And it didn't go back to your average. And finally, when it went red, you'd take it. Yeah. But if you give me a thousand dollars in person and you just take it away from me, of course it would be like, what the fuck? You're like, bro? I'm going to kneecap this motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, and, and I love what you said about just like the chance. I, like while you were saying that, I just had, I think, PTSD and it just almost like blacked out there. Of the times where I, I FOMO shorted the bottom of a range, got squeezed, yep. and then it came right back down. And I said, I'm about to be right. And I didn't take it off. Yep. And then I ended up taking a fat loss when it said, Vroom, and Harry started buying it up that way. <laughs> and I, I, can, I, I can remember it. I, Here's it, the it signal. Here's the day. signal, folks. If you're short and it blesses you and you get blessed and the market <laughs> blesses you and says – Here's an opportunity to break even. And Harry Haas goes long from et da 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 da. Mm -hmm. That is the signal, folks. That is no, the Harry signal and Tay. to fail. Yeah. <laughs> well, even to that, I'll never know. What did Jorge Masvidal say? He's like, you got blessed. <laughs> you got blessed, motherfucker. <laughs> today on EVK where I was like, okay, watching for zombie. And then right. there were some people who were like, mm, I don't know. And I was like. Shorting no. the VWAP. And then we had Alex come in and say, okay, that should have done blower. I'm done for the day. So yeah. two people basically confirming. And then we have Val coming in saying, all right, listen, yeah. I'm not even touching it anymore. And you know me, guys. Like, I could stay afternoon. All if afternoon. it's got two legs, I'm going to touch it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, Val, if Val gets up from trading and he's like, I'm not shorting that shit, I, I know five tickers that he has been like, it's not a short. And I'm like, yeah, fuck this motherfucker. Yeah, I start shorting. Short it. <laughs> the next thing I know is like, all five. Yep. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Dude, he just buys into my, he sells my That's covers. That's the signal, man. Alex says yeah. don't short. Bow says don't short. And Harry's looking at it for a long. <laughs> no, that is yeah, a bail. And that's where the chat can, can help a lot where yep. like, you know, we're not necessarily saying, oh, we're long at like 360 or 350, but we're saying, okay, we're watching this area for a long, you know, you, you were supposed to be making a plan before this. You're supposed to be drawing your lines. Tosh yeah. says every morning now at uh, 920 before the market opens at 930. If you don't have your lines drawn and you have no plan, you should not be fucking trading. Like you yep. should not be yep. trading anymore. 
Yep. The, the, wor- the worst part about trading yep. is just going back and hearing, like even just talking about it just makes you remember, like if you had dropped the ego, dropped the, the need to be right mentality, I mean, would all be up how much more money? Would all be fucking, yep. you know, I'd have a much bigger apartment. I'd have a lot, a lot of cooler shit. He wouldn't I be mean, doing this webinar in his fucking kitchen. <laughs> No, that's true. I wouldn't be <laughs> over the fucking there. You know, microwave in the background, bro. On a Mac, I wouldn't be in a fake office. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so you've been trading for what six years now, right? In total. Yeah. Yep. That's fine. What are your What are your future plans? What's like the next Joe Kelly? You look at the future. You see what? Uh, algorithm, algo. Really. I've been coding an algo for the last 60 or 90 days or so, two, three months. And uh, it's basically going to be a basket of strategies that are just going to trade big caps and options. And uh, cool. so I'm trying to go fully automated and not day trade. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the misconception, right? Because day trading is the coolest job in the world. Like it is awesome. But, and I'm saying this honestly, it's also the worst fucking job in the world. Like, oh, it, dude, it's, 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 it's emotionally, even, yep. even as a profitable trader, even making money, I, and again, I, I will never take it back. I love what the fuck I do. I'm sure you guys do too. But like, even Alex, we've had this conversation, like there's the days where you just fucking love it. And then there's days where you're just like, fuck this. Like, why, why do I do this yeah. to myself? Yep. It, it's, it's a tough job. I mean. Yeah, it's a great job, but don't get me wrong. But it's a fun yeah, so it's job, but it does come with you know a lot of other shit that you know. It, there's a lot so of many parts. mental stress and a lot of mental sacrifice and uh, almost like mental baggage that you put yourself through in order to become successful. You know, and especially with relationships, I found the most with other people as well. And maybe because I'm younger. I have to like fucking deal with a lot of more people telling me what the fuck I should do with my life or even, you know, everyone has their own opinion because like, even with James, James was a haircutter, even with Joe, like Joe, Joe had like, Joe was older when he got into trading. I think a lot older, you were older than me, weren't you? Yeah. You started when you were 12, right? Yeah, like, I started trading when I was in fucking, like, grade 11, you know? That's when I fucking started. And Mm. so everyone was telling me, bad idea, bad idea, bad idea. And, you know, I think when a lot of people and, like, there's a lot of, like, kind of doubt put on you, doubt cast on you, that, like, oh, what you're doing right now, you can't make a career out of it, or you, you know, I think there's a lot of mental fucking, you know, mental stress and shit. No, there's just, you just said it, there's a lot of mental fucking... I mean, like, so fucking, <laughs> it is. Honestly, that's the best fucking way. You that's can the best it. fucking. I agree. No. I agree. Yeah. It, I, I just fucking in the mental like fucking. Yeah, tell me that I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, I I learned I learned how emotionally. Dude, fucking one tough. time, one time, I my buddy, we were driving. I forget where we were driving. And I don't know what it was, but we were just talking. And, you know, sometimes you'll just like, it's just like, in, instead of people saying, uh, or, and it's like that mental pause. Yeah. Like for a little while, my thing was like, I'd say something, and I'd be like, butt fucking. And he was like, butt fucking, what? <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and from that moment on, I've always, I've always listened to people's sentences. And when they'll say like, this and then they'll say fucking it's like it dude it just goes so well it like <laughs> you're like mental fucking and then like i'm like yes that works <laughs> but it was just that day that he went what'd you say butt fucking what about butt and i was like oh my god no. <laughs> and i was like ruin that forever now golly <laughs> and dude i that was like it was instead of me saying oh, like at the end of a sentence or something like that and like a pause i i would i would say it and i'd be like you know man but fucking and and one time he just goes but and i was like <laughs> did you just you just say butt fucking yeah <laughs> he's like oh gosh 
<laughs> Kenny oh, never hung out with him again. It must have been on your mind after fucking, you know, losing <laughs> trading for a while. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Dude, this happened after a long, long before I ever knew about the market. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> this was still when I was a skateboarder in high school. Uh, dude, I would have loved to meet high school Joe Kelly. I mean, I no, feel like I, I, was, <laughs> I was a dickhead. Dude, I was a grumpy was a little dick. asshole. I was. Just... I was a dick. <laughs> a dick man. Harry, you and I thought it was probably... fun to be mean. I was never a bully to people, yeah. but I was always really sarcastic, and yeah. so it was like you could never say anything serious to me that I didn't try to like come back with some smart ass <laughs> remark, and it was like I. I would never bully anybody, but uh, somebody could probably call that emotional bullying in some yes. way. But I would never like talk shit. You know what I mean? I wouldn't say like bad, but I was always like, you can't ever have a serious conversation with Joe. Fucking hell, God yeah. Lee. And so mind would, fucking. That's <laughs> mental fucking. Yeah. That's mental fucking. <laughs> you know, it, but dude, the emotional, the mental side and the emotional side of trading is, I mean, like Harry was talking about earlier, is is the side that people don't want to talk about. So. This was one of the questions uh, that we didn't quite fulfill maybe everybody's question about, yeah. but I did work full time before going full time trading. And how did I do in, how did I, that's everybody's question to me every time is how did you make that transition? How did you get out of it? How did you, because a lot of people, they have a job that like allowed them to trade and then they just got out of it. Like I didn't have a job that allowed me to trade. I was literally 12, 14, 16 hours a day. Like, working constantly and so it eventually just became that's why swing trading worked so well and i didn't actually finally quit um until like i felt like uh i had mic that's for sure like i had all the uh um, support the yeah the all the all the all the uh freaking emotional support to go along with it to actually make that transition and it was all of these people, it was, it, it was all these people around me that were like, are you not a full-time trader? And it was Alex, he would be like, do you trade full-time? No, no, I'm still, you know, I still work. I remember the day you announced it, man. I remember that. I'm, do what? I remember the day you announced you were going full-time trading and like you, you posted the picture of the check that you had made from trading, your first check that you took out. Right, yep. Yeah, yep. I remember that, that was the shit. first time I ever paid myself. And it was yeah. like, it wasn't even that much money. But it was the yeah. real, it was just, it was the first time I'd ever wired out. I just thought that you needed to just keep growing your accounts until they were as, just as big as you could get them until, you know, they made, pro and, and so I'd never yeah. known, like, just wire out, just, just yeah. pay yourself, pay yourself a little bit. Never knew, never would have done it, never would have done it until MIC. And it was actually Nico that, that kind of ingrained that in my head. And yeah, Nico instilled that in me as well. Yep. Yeah. He and he Rest would talk to me about it. he would he'd be like, just request a check. Request a check because then it feels like a paycheck to yourself and it's the most rewarding feeling in the world. Everyone loves to cash a check. I was like, yeah. that's true. And I was like, boom, done. And so it was like it was the first time I ever wired out, ever wired out. And I didn't even wire, I think I wired out like four hundred dollars. But yeah. it was I wired out to go It's a paycheck. Yeah, I wired out yeah. to go to the most expensive restaurant in San Antonio for me and my wife. And that was what that paid for. And that was the first time I ever wired out. And I, everything else, I'd always lived off my income uh, from, from Ford. And yeah. then, so the way to quit, that's what everybody asks. How do I quit my day job? Well, um, let me tell you the biggest mistake I've ever made in my trading, quitting my day job. <laughs> it was biggest mistake in my career ever. Quitting that, uh, it freed up a lot of my time. But what I would recommend is, is find a career that allows you to trade and then continue to make money in a um, non-market environment. That, you know, like James is a business owner. James continues to run the barbershops. I uh, knew it. Harry just shows up at everybody's fucking barbecues drunk and he's that you know, creepy uncle. He just yeah, he's a creepy <laughs> uncle. <laughs> what do you do outside of trading, Harry? What do you do? I actually don't know. Uh, well, it's pretty much, I mean, like I just trade full time and right. you know, basically. So when I, the market closes, what do you do? 
What do I do? <laughs> yeah, what do you do? I usually like This I, goes from interviewing Joe Kelly podcast to <laughs> what do you do? Well, Harry? I mean, yeah, like I mean, I do like like so basically I went to university for two years, dropped out. What'd you go for? Uh business. Commerce. That's vague. Commerce, business. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, like my dream well, I had always I had found trading before I went to university. So mm-hmm. I was in university studying. And, um, you know, MIC also came along when I was in university and I, at that point, like I had my own kind of apartment. It was on the water. Um, I remember the pictures Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. along with yeah. some oh, other things. I remember the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then Harry, I remember you drunk calling me one night. You're like, dude, should, should I just quit, man? Should I just quit university, man? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I love this. I do remember so him much. posting questions about that. And so, yeah. so why did you go for business? What, what was the plan? Well, it was just basically, I mean, everyone told me that, yeah, I should go for business and cause I could pay for it. You know, it was like, mm-hmm. you know, you should go, you should go. So I went and I was like, this fucking sucks. Other than the parties on the weekend and the fact that I have my own place and people would come over and drink was even worse. Because, man, there's stories of me fucking trading in the morning, shorting some shit, fucking putting a stop in, going and yakking, and just praying it was a fucking all-day fader, or else I was going to get stopped out and miss the re-entry. So, I yep. mean, there were, Jesus there's tons of stories like that. I mean, and I, I honestly got to a point in my life where I was just partying, drinking a lot. And I know I'm super young, but, like, it, I knew it was toxic for myself to come home and just have fucking... 50 Corona bottles on my fucking, uh, on my table, like James has back there. And just, Oh my God. How many bottles have you drank during this entire thing? James is intoxicated at this point. No, that's, that's literally two. I have to go to the gym after this. I can't drink anymore. Jesus. 930 at night. I know. It's 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 only the 930 for freaking Harry. Yeah. It's 1030 for me. Yeah. yeah anyway. Jesus. So I did, I did, you know, I did all that. And, um, my parents were like, listen, like, do you want to live with us for like a year or till whatever, till you just buy a house or whatever you want to do. And honestly, that was the, probably the best decision I had made because I had people that I had to be accountable for. And I had people that kind of kept me in check. Whereas yep. when I lived by myself, it was like, Oh, fuck it. You know, and also it didn't work out well that I lived right beside a liquor store. Like where I lived on the water, there was also a liquor store a couple blocks. Oh, God. So, I mean, (laughs) I I would be on my way home and I'd see the liquor store and be like, oh, you know. And then next thing you know, like you just have a couple drinks. And there were some people who kind of lived at the bottom of my building who would come up. And there were people who lived just a couple blocks away who would come over. Next thing you know, we got five, six boys around (laughs) drinking, arguing over some random shit. I'd be drunk in the MIC chat like, yo! And people would be like, hey, fucking night, bro. What are you doing? (laughs) And the I I learned how to be consistent hungover, which – I had a process, which I called the hungover process, where I'd wake up at 4 a.m., drink a shit ton of water, have a drink a shit ton of Tylenol. Then I'd wake up at 6 a.m., drink <laughs> some more water, drink some more Tylenol. I'd wake up in the morning, and I'd be almost hangover free by then. I'd still have, like, a little water bottle. You know, I'd be reading what Bao or Joe or James is saying in chat. You know, and, like, it, it, it was just, like, I was almost, like, off the rails – but I mean, now I think I'm at a point where like, I'm a way better trader now compared than a year ago. Um, I, I liked I, you better as a short seller. Yeah, sniper trader. Oh, 23 fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm way, um, I'm not like, it's not that I miss the old Harry, but it's like, I do like where I am now. You know, I'm definitely a better trader. I'm definitely, I have another year under my belt. And I also have people who, you know, and some people are like, oh, you still live with your parents or whatever. But it's like, no, I moved out. And then they were like, no, you should probably come back. Because like, I mean, they did like a surprise visit or whatever, because my mom had to get eye surgery and no one told me. And they just came up to my apartment and was like, what the fuck? Jesus <laughs> Christ. They had like a bunch of boys <laughs> over, they knock on the door and they weren't paying for it. So, I mean, like, it's not yeah. like they can be like, 
Oh, there, have more yeah. lines on a coffee table than Whitney yeah. Houston. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, and they were just like, "Holy fuck! Like what?" And they were like, "Oh, we're gonna take you out to dinner and shit," you know, like, or do you want to go out to dinner or whatever? And I, I was just so like, had an intervention. Had an intervention. <laughs> and then the rest of your family was there. <laughs> No, like, oh Harry, we need to talk. The rest of my family are like, "You're retired. Like, you go back to school. Like, you." <laughs> like, I'm just like, no. Like, you people obviously don't know what you're talking about. But and the, every family event, it's like, so what's your five year plan? It's like, so you asked me this the last one, and <laughs> blow up trading. You, know, you asked me. It has not been a year yet. You know? <laughs> like it's been three months okay five years is a long time there's a lot of things that goes into those five years nothing has changed <laughs> no, i can assure you nothing's changed from the last two weeks when you asked me what my five-year plan is trust me but i mean it's it's honestly good i also have some younger siblings who like you know if they go somewhere or something like that because all my siblings were like were from me and my younger sister, it's like eight years apart. So it's crazy that we're all spaced out super crazy. So like I'm in second year university and my brother's like in grade six, you know? That's funny. Yeah. So yeah. So like we're all super, super spaced out. And I don't know how that works. So out. basically what you're saying is you were the only planned child. I, I, <laughs> I know. Everyone else was an accident. I was Harry unplanned and then they <laughs> But what? Uh, yeah, but you know, yeah. just it's just kind of how it's worked out for me. I'm happy when COVID's over. You know, I mean, I don't really have a plan, but I'm definitely going to do some traveling. I'm definitely going to, uh, you know, have some time for myself for sure. But I mean, it's life has been good to me for the past like since like you know since I graduated. You know, I haven't really been through any like terrible terrible hardship or struggles and maybe what i consider a struggle most people don't consider a struggle because like we know what it's like to get like as you'd say butt fucking you know we know <laughs> that from oh, the i know butt fucking right? <laughs> and you know so i i just keep i'm i mean from like from where i was last year you know like i haven't really been drinking that much to be honest i haven't really been going out it's or good. working that much but honestly, that was good for me. Every once in a while, I just get, you know, like everyone does, you know, I'll drink, get drunk or whatever. But now, like, I'm not really partying as much, trying to, just trying to live a normal, healthy lifestyle now. I, I just had a flashback to this, the story of Joe Kelly at the, uh, was it the Austin meetup? Which meetup was that? The Dallas meetup, I mean? The first time where you were stumbling through the, no, the Philly meetup where you were stumbling yeah, was through Philly. the streets. Yeah, that was Philly. That's the last time I ever drank. That's you went after hours. I haven't drank after. I haven't drank since. That's, like, that's about did to you. I, that's about dude. He will literally ruin your life. It will change you. It'll he'll change make you, you the best trader, but he'll ruin your life. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. I I was doing good. I was doing good. The whole night. Okay, I had like five cranberry vodkas that's really nothing for me i'm a big guy i yeah. can handle it yeah yeah but uh tequila? yeah it was tequila <laughs> oh dude. two shots what happened was uh the whole night i knew i gotta avoid bow yeah. i'll Hey, buddy, what's up? From across the room. And I told Austin the same thing. I said, you and me, we got to stick together. Okay? Got to stick together. And uh, he abandoned me. Where'd he go? And then I ran. He went to go find a wave somewhere. somewhere. What? Yeah. He went to go <laughs> fucking flop his hair on some chick. Hi, my name's Austin. I'm from Hawaii and ride surfboards. <laughs> and she was just like, oh, yes. And it was like, it was <laughs> and I'm over here, like, on the other side. I'm like, hey, <laughs> hey, over there. You? Okay, fine. And, um, and so he just wanted to do his own thing. And, uh, and so I just socialize, 
you know, I was hanging out with Alex and Tosh for a minute. I was hanging out with Oliver and then we said, well, why we're rocking over here. We're doing it. We're talking to them. We're talking to them. And I, so I was like, I was like consciously trying to maneuver my way around bow. I was like, wherever bow is, I'm on the 180 degree on the opposite. <laughs> Where he goes here, I go here. And when he goes here, I go here. And when, he was, and so I was just like the whole time, like I'm over here and he's there. And at the end of the night, uh we just i'm walking out of the bathroom and he's walking in no <laughs> so we just ran into each other just joe what's up man and he was fucking plastered <laughs> at this point and and you know bow's just so lovable he, he <laughs> he's, so giggly. he's, just, he's the know. most fun person to be around i've never been around a person that is more fun and more positive than him and and so he's like dude we gotta go get some shots i was like oh fuck <laughs> and so th yeah it had like five cranberry vodkas and it. it was like mostly cranberry a little bit of vodka <laughs> so i was fine and uh so we go to the bar and then uh, one of the MIC members comes up and sees us ordering, and he goes, I'm going to buy you guys shots. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and so he buys me and Bow shots and him shots, and we're all like, yeah, let's take them together. Ooh. That was the first shot of tequila, okay? And I thought I was off the hook. I took a shot with Bow. No. Bow insisted he buy a shot for me. <laughs> Round two. <laughs> Shot. and so second one boom oh uh, dude this is in a very short period of time too okay yeah. mind you this is not like periods of where we walk away and come back and walk away and then come back <laughs> no it was back to back <laughs> and so we hit it and he's like oh man that's good all right one more i was like <laughs> no no, 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 no. He's like, let's do it one more. And I'm like, fine. And it was, it, it, this was like, this is, he was just telling me, you know, just one more ad, just one more ad. Okay, I'm going to short just a little bit more. I'm going to short just a little bit more. He's such a, he's such and a then fuck. I just like, that third one, bro, was just, as soon as I threw it back, I was like, oh, this is, is going to end go. bad. This is going to end bad. And, uh, at that point, I decided that I had to go piss again. Yeah. And so did Bao. So I don't know why, but me and Tosh and me and Bao always end up in the bathroom at the same time. Apparently, we're aligning <laughs> on the same schedule. Yeah, same um, bladder. Same bladder. Same bladder <laughs> schedule. And, uh, um, yeah, so we go to the bathroom. And then at that time, they flip the lights on in the bar, right, in the club <laughs> that we're in. And it's just like, and so we're like what the fuck you know and everybody that was hot not so much anymore and, yeah. and <laughs> it's one of those like it was zombie times and you're like, like mm, <laughs> i'm gonna go by myself the now. demand is fading yes yeah. yes the demand is fading <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> It was like discovering. It was like discovering a hidden ATM. You're like, <laughs> Jesus. Christ. I see what you did there. I see how you called it a sales agreement. <laughs> yeah. And uh, no, anyway. So we leave. Okay, we all get together. We leave. Austin rejoins me at this point. All of a sudden, we're arm in arm again. Austin and I drink, am, right? He drank like, there. He drank. Oh, that, that was drink? the only time. That was that was me and him. That was our that was our pact. That was our pact. Yeah. We don't drink. So we will drink together. Moderately. He had like four. I had five. I was like, we're good. We're even. And then I ran into Bao. He avoided in the entire night. And that was bad. So all of a sudden, me and me and Austin relink, right? Arm in arm, ready to go, ready to leave. No bathroom upstairs. They wouldn't let you back in the bathroom. So you just had to leave. So we left. And everybody was like, I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to go back to the hotel and I'm going to pass out because I got to piss like a racehorse. No. 
Chad and his wife from Cobra, me and Austin, a bunch of other members from MIC. Uh, we all decide, no, let me rephrase that. They all decide that we're going to go get pizza at 3 a.m. <laughs> because there's this pizza place around the block. Okay. They said around the block. Eight blocks later, we're still fucking <laughs> walking to the pizza place. I've had to piss for eight blocks and I am mammered. Okay. Gone. Gone. And I'm just like saying, I'm like walking in the back of the group, like talking to Chad and his wife. And I'm like, yeah, guys, it's fine. Have you had a good time? Me too. <laughs> Great. I'm like, man, I can't wait to get there. I got to piss so bad. And so uh, we're like, they're like, it's just down the block. It's just one more block. This is fucking like eight blocks has been like seven <laughs> blocks gone by. I'm like, you oh, said bro, that. In Canada, you can just whip it out in a little alleyway. There's not enough people to even see you. <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, there was an alley between the buildings. It was dark. And there's a trash can. And I felt like I was on an episode of like – like the Punisher or like Daredevil, you know, like how everything happens in the alley and it's all dark and it's like the trash can. And I was like, I felt like I'm in that city moment. And so like, I just walked back there and I literally, I'm just like right next to the trap. I'm like right next to the dumpster. And I'm like, that was my moment where I'm like, you have hit an all new low in your life. <laughs> when you are literally urinating next to a dumpster, you need to stop what you're doing and rethink and that was when you stopped everything. Drinking. And that was when I stopped completely. I have not, I, I haven't, I don't casually do it anymore. I don't do it. What I just, I don't do it. And that, that was, I was people. like, I was like, no, no, I I'm telling you, bro, you can't, you can't keep up with Val. He will retire you. He will retire yes. you. You I, will I, be, you will be Michael Bisping thinking you can take on George St. Pierre and he's going to retire you. He's gonna, you're gonna, you are gonna fucking hand over the belt and you will be retired. No, I, <laughs> I, and I, I tried in San Jose, failed, didn't work. I tried in Dallas, failed, didn't work. Um, and then, um, there was San Jose, hey. Dallas, Philly. Uh, there was another one. The first New York meetup. New York, there we go. That was it. Cool. So it was Dallas, San Jose, New York, Philly. And um, no, never again. And now you're done. I'm done. I'm done, bro. But that was, <laughs> dude, that was my, that was, that was it. I was like, I'm out. I'm out. I can't keep up with this. So. I mean, no, he's a, I mean, you're talking about, a, I think he gets a new liver every six months. He goes to Thailand or some shit, comes back, he's restocked. He's like, fuck this. Dude, for real. Yeah. He just walks Dude. around with a fucking dialysis cart right next to him, <laughs> pumping that shit out. Like, and he just, he's just ready to go the next Dude, day. This is the number one lesson at MIC taught. You avoid the fuck out of Bao at a bar. Yeah. If you don't want to get fucking. Bao is a zombie. Oh, check. Yeah, that was a, no. He's the hot chick. He's the hot chick at ten thirty. Walk away. Walk away. Yeah. <laughs> Bow is Don't Kodak. Be, bro, yes. No, he's our he's our KDA. He's fucking Kodak, he, RKDA, DPTH, SPI. Bro, he'll fucking and, uh, limit. He'll limit up on you, and you ain't got no you got no warning whatsoever. <laughs> Misses your hard stop, just blows right through it. Go Market maker the won't even execute because the bid's too spar part. Like, if you won't even, nothing, just, you're done. You're done. If you're one of many casualties in Bao's line of retirement. I'm sure he's probably <laughs> killed everybody at some, at some point. Oh. Everyone in MIC, I don't know. Dude, we all got to get together. Like, I, I, that's why I want this shit to be over so we can all get together. He always says, he's like, yeah, my girlfriend, you know, this girlfriend or that girlfriend, he's always got a new girlfriend. And I'm like, where do all these people go? And I've been, I'm, I know what happens to them now. They all die from alcohol poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> they're buried somewhere because they all died from alcohol poisoning <laughs> because they can't keep up <laughs> this is gotta got him hit <laughs> well shit well oh, right. man. on that note i think we yeah i think of the, the bow killing his girlfriend's part we can kill this <laughs> <laughs> well honestly guys that was fun as fuck i always love talking to everybody 
Um, thank you, Joe. Thank you for this. Yeah, perfect. Thanks thank, a lot, bro. Thank you for sharing and your honestly, secrets. I think that this was definitely a good interview because it really does, like, I mean, as much as we do see you through the webinars and as much as we do see you all the time through chat, I don't know where James just went, but as, as, I'm here. <laughs> as much as, you know, we, we see you through all that stuff, like, it is always good and refreshing to talk about the journey, the experience, you know, everything that just really makes you who you are. And, um, you know, I think that that is, you know, definitely an important part. And I think it's good to have that out there as well. I appreciate oh, yeah. it, gentlemen. Yeah, well, thank you guys. Love you guys as always. Enjoy your uh, workout, sir.